All right, then we're just going to talk about solids just very quickly here. Um, you know, the properties of a solid really depend on what kind of compound you have. Um, so we won't spend too much time on it. Um, you can classify solids in different ways. You can classify them as amorphous or crystalline. Amorphous, they have no defined molecular shape. So the molecules, while organized and while in place, they look different from spot to spot. There's no real kind of um, you know, symmetry anywhere within this molecule. And then in crystallines, they have order. So if you zoom in on one part of the solid and then you zoom in on another part of the solid, the atoms are going to be arranged in the exact same configuration. A popular example of this is diamonds. Right, so here over here, these little uh, black little balls represent little carbons. You can see that they are in little tetrahedral type of shapes, and that's the structure of diamonds, right? So, you know, you can buy diamonds and, you know, the better quality, the more crystalline they are, the, the, the pricier they are. And basically, you know, what you're looking for is this type of crystalline structure, and any imperfections are going to result in a lower quality diamond. That's one way you can classify solids. Another way you can classify them is um, what kind of what, what's keeping them together, right? Um, so we can have molecular solids, ionic solids, and then atomic solids. For molecular solids, so this one's going to be made of molecules. Say separate molecules. And think about what's holding these separate molecules together. They're being held together with these intermolecular forces. An example of this is kind of like ice. Right, which is liquid water, we have separate water molecules. And the reason that they stay together is due to the intermolecular forces. As we learned, intermolecular forces are significantly weaker than bonds. And so molecular solids generally have low melting points. Ice has a relatively high melting point because the intermolecular forces that it does have are very strong, right? Hydrogen bonding. But something like dry ice is carbon dioxide that has a very low melting point and boiling point as well. Ionic solids are different. They are made of ions, obviously. And these ions are held together with ionic bonds. So example, something like sodium chloride, right? We have an Na+, a Cl-, they have a full-on charge, and they're attracted to one another. Of course, don't forget that in this case, um, you know, it's not just one sodium and one chloride, it's a whole bunch of them. Remember when we took a look at the um, structure of ionic solids. And these are held together with ionic bonds, which are much stronger than any intermolecular force. And so these have very high melting points, right? If you try to melt salt, um, you probably wouldn't be able to do it in your kitchen, or at least don't try. Um, and then finally, we have atomic solids. Um, these ones are made out of atoms. Right, so they're made out of single atoms instead of molecular solids where they're made up out of molecules. And then these ones would have to be subdivided into other categories because we can have different types. You can have covalent, which are held together with covalent bonds, right? So these are um, individual atoms that are covalently bound to one another. So an example of this is silicon, which is extremely important in our um, you know, kind of futuristic lives that we lead, right? And it's very important in our computer chips. Now it's, you know, very important in solar panels, um, and it has a lot to do with these covalent bonds of silicon. Since these are made out of bonds, not intermolecular forces, they have relatively high melting points. Then we have things called non-bonding solids. And so again, these don't have bonds. They're just simply held together with intermolecular forces. So something like this would be maybe like helium or any of your noble gases, right? Helium, argon, that kind of stuff. Um, and seeing how they're not held together with bonds, they're going to have low melting points. And then if we think about what kind of intermolecular forces they're going to have, since they're only made up out of one atom, 
they can only have dispersion forces, which is the weakest intermolecular force. And so they're going to have very low melting points, right? Something like helium has a very, very low melting point. We're talking about a couple Kelvin. And then finally, we have metallic solids. So this is the type that we talk about least in general chemistry. Um, remember that metallic solids are held together with metallic bonds. In metallic bonds, the um, electrons are basically just shared between the entire solid. We have that sea of electrons. So it's something like lithium or iron, right? It's some kind of metals. And their melting point is highly dependent on what kind of bonding you have. And so we'll just call that as variable. Again, just a very brief overview of solids. Um, if you're interested in solids and stuff like that, this would be like a field of material science, right? Where you study the application of solids into, into new stuff, such as solar panels and whatnot.